you take us all the way from drums to quantum physics. Quite the spread. Did you know that it was going to be this big when you got into it? You've done other science-related books, so you must have had some inkling. Yes, I did know. Because, um, in a way, this was the premise of the book, that I was writing about everything. And, um, and so my agreement with my editor was that this book was going to take quite a while. And actually, it took, it took longer than it was supposed to, but he was patient. Um, and I also knew, because when I tried to describe to friends what I was writing about, I started to blather, and, uh, I, and it turned out to be very difficult. It, it's easy to say I'm writing a book about information. And some people would say, oh, cool. But then other people would say, yeah, go on. <laughs> and at that point, I would be a little bit stuck, and I would do some hemming and hawing. Um, but I knew that it was in a kind of silly way going to be a history of all of everything um, as distinct from a theory of everything because well you mentioned drums as a starting point and in another way a starting point is the beginning of language and the invention of the written word the invention of the alphabet my premise again is that from our modern sophisticated perspective we can see that the alphabet is just another technology of information it uh, enabled humans to encode information to um, store it, to transmit it in new ways. And so in that sense, it is a natural ancestor of computers. And in between the telegraph and the telephone and the printing press and all of these other things that um, are all of a kind. And it's obvious to us that they're all members of a category, but it wasn't always obvious. And so that's kind of the point of the book is is to um, retell the story of our growing awareness of the importance of information in human life. This has dis been described by some as the information age, but it, after reading the book I went, well, then if I use that definition, then every age has been the information age, because most of those eras are marked by how did we transmit information. Exactly. So you're my perfect reader. That's just what you're supposed to think after reading the book, that, um, that all of human history has been the information age. But the, the cliché didn't arise until about 50 years ago. when And, and the OED, the Oxford English Dictionary, has, um, as they do, traced what they so far believe is the earliest printed reference uh, to this expression. And it was a guy who's, who was saying something like, um, we could call this time we're living in the information age, but I'm sure that phrase is never going to catch on. You know, eventually it'll be called something else, but it's kind of an information age. This is 1960. Um, well, we know all about information retrieval and information processing and um, we have these machines that are all about information. So it's natural for us to think in these terms. Have you thought about the information sorting that you had to do to make the book, or did you, or is that irrelevant you just made the book? Oh, I've, well, of course I thought about it because that's what I was writing about. I mean, the, the last word in my subtitle is flood, and I knew that, um, that that's our current predicament. And certainly it was my predicament in writing the book, but not just in writing this book. Every book I've ever written has had, has been infinite in a way. Even when you write a biography of a single person, there's a story with a natural beginning and a natural ending. And you think that's a finite story, but it's not. Because every person is a part of a culture, a part of a community, a part of the world, and, and 
the things that he or she does ripple outward infinitely. And so you may have noticed that biographies tend to be very long. That's why biographers get sucked into, into this, the overwhelming flood of information just like everybody else. And I am an observer of a world in which even people who aren't writing books are overwhelmed by information. I mean, anybody who reads books um, complains that there are too many of them and that it's, it's as if we're still in school and there's a reading list and we can't ever get to the end of it. And if you are following people on Twitter, which didn't even exist when I, most of the time I was working on the book, you know that, <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, y the amount of the Twitter, um, the Twitter sphere that any one person experiences is like a thimble full of the ocean. And you know that. So the minute you start to think, gee, I wish I could see all of it, have access to all of it, the next thing is you're going to feel overwhelmed. Um, so we have to learn to cope. We all are developing strategies and I think we're all, at least I am, swinging back and forth sometimes between feeling confident in my ability to find the information I need and feeling uh, that I'm drowning. The book is The Information, A Theory, A History, A Flood. I've been speaking with the author James Glick and The Information, published by Pantheon Books, distributed in Canada by Random House.